fear of flying influences millions of people's lives around the world. And in this video, along with others in this series, should be able to provide some assistance for those suffering from it. Hopefully it will get you away on holiday or with business with much less stress. In this video, we're going to look through the stats, the main causes of stress, and most importantly, how you can ease the fear of flying as much as possible. For those of you new to this channel, I am currently a pilot in the Royal Air Force and initially started making these videos as a way to improve my knowledge and understanding around aviation, but also provide that to everyone else. Following the success of the turbulence video, it is clear that many people are looking for some way to help, and hopefully this video will work some way towards that. What doesn't help in recent times is the perceived increase in air crashes and a decline in safety standards in the aviation industry. It seems like every time you check the news, there is another safety issue with air travel, and this gives the impression that the problem is huge and only gets it worse. Due to the few unusual events in recent history, it has encouraged the media to now hyper-analyze the aviation industry, which leads to a focus on minimal events, such as an aircraft diverting or having to return to its destination. Instances that provide no danger and are very benign, apart from the hassle for the passengers to move to another flight or to book a hotel for the evening. Like I insinuated at the start, a lot of the issue surrounding fear of flying is a fear of the unknown, and arming yourself with more of an understanding around the topic should help ease some of that anxiety. Whether it's the sounds you hear, turbulence or non-standard events like minor emergencies, it can all seem very scary. And the truth is, it's much safer and much more boring. So let's look at the stats. Initially, I'll look at the stats for the USA and the UK as they are my largest viewer base, and then the global stats. We're not going to get too bogged down in the numbers, but for some people, this is a clear and easy way to see the danger posed to them. So for the United States, there are on average 40,000 domestic and international flights per day. This means that there are on average 14,600,000 flights per year. If we look at the number of fatal commercial plane crashes in 2024, that number is zero. In 2023, the number is zero. 2022, there was one and in 2021, there was zero. If you put that into a percentage, that's basically a 0% chance. Over that same time period, that would be a 1 in 58,400,000 chance of being involved in a fatal plane crash. The chances of being struck by lightning in the United States is approximately 1 in 1.2 million on any given year. If we were also to use four years of stats for lightning strikes, that probability is 1 in 305,000. So over those four years, you are 191 times more likely to be struck by lightning than to be involved in a fatal commercial plane crash. Even looking at the age-old comment that it's much more dangerous to drive to the airport than it is to fly on a plane from one. In 2022, there were approximately 622 million trips in a car per day in the US which is 227 billion trips per year. In that same year, there were over 42,000 deaths caused by fatal car accidents. That is roughly a 1 in 5.3 million chance of being in a fatal car crash. And for commercial air travel, that number was 1. A 1 in 14.6 million chance. On the face of it, that doesn't seem too different, but you have to put it into perspective. Statistically, you would have to be on 14,600,000 flights before you are then due a fatal one. If you change the time frame to the last five years, that statistic for car travel would remain the same, but for air travel, it would be one in 18,250,000. In the United Kingdom, commercial flights average 5,290 flights per day, which is just under 2 million flights per year. In the UK, there hasn't been a fatal commercial crash since 1989, which would mean a 1 in 67 million chance of being in a fatal commercial plane crash. And for global travel, the numbers aren't too different. There are approximately 100,000 flights worldwide each day that take off both domestically and internationally. That is 36,500,000 flights per year. Of those flights in 2023, there were six fatal accidents. In 2022, that number was 12. Even on the worst year in the last 10 years, 
the number was 22 in 2019. It's still not zero, and not nice to hear that sometimes there are accidents, but in terms of statistics and odds, the chances are basically zero. As much as I've rambled on about stats and numbers, it's actually surprising how rare these incidents are. From what you see on social media and traditional media, it seems that planes are crashing all the time and it's getting more dangerous. But the opposite is true. I'm not trying to say there is absolutely no risk, but hopefully for those of you that are more number-minded, this will provide some reassurance about the odds. You could even break those statistics down even further, which will only make flying look even better. You could use the number of miles flown versus the number of fatal accidents and compare that to any other form of transport. The number of passengers versus the number of fatalities, or even the number of hours on each transport versus the fatal accident rate. I don't want to completely fill this video with mostly stats and figures, so I left these ones out. But if you are someone that numbers will help, then these are some avenues to go down. As I mentioned earlier, one of the main things that pops up when I talk to people about their fear of flying is the lack of knowledge surrounding the subject or the lack of control in the moment. For the lack of control, there isn't too much that can be done about that. But you can rest assured that the pilots will have been trained to an exceptionally high standard and on average will have completed at least 18 months to four years worth of training. Within that time frame, they would have been tested multiple times, been medically examined multiple times, and still being trained in every day on the job with regular tests and assessments to pass annually. Something you need to remind yourself is that it's in the interest of the airlines to have the most competent pilots, as the reputational damage and therefore loss of income can be massive if they are not diligent in both their recruitment process and assessment thereafter. As a crash for an airline, especially down to neglect or incompetence, will have far-reaching consequences for that airline. And for the lack of knowledge, this can be filled with useful videos, interviews with pilots and discussions, and all that information will then add up. One of the apparent ironies of this video, if you've seen any other videos on this channel, is that I cover air accident investigations. But to me, these two subjects go hand in hand. Again, I'm not suggesting that you watch air crash investigations to aid in your fear of flying, but for some people this does help, mostly because you see the inner workings of the flight deck, how the pilots operate and what happens when an emergency crops up. Not all accident investigations result in a crash, and in all cases, lessons are learnt that make aviation safer for everyone. It is the reason that aviation is safer now than ever before. One of the most fantastic parts of the industry is the emphasis on reporting safety flaws and providing a just culture for mistakes. This means that problems are fixed before they're ever allowed to cause an issue. So some of the main areas that also provide stress is turbulence, the unusual noises that occur whilst in flight and sometimes on the ground, and the actions on an emergency. I have already made separate videos on each of these and will link them in the description if you want to know more information on them. Spoiler alert, turbulence is almost never an issue, with the aircraft tested beyond natural limits and the pilots are trained to handle it, and the noises can all be attributed to normal workings of the aircraft. The biggest one for me is how most emergencies are not emergencies at all. I go into detail more in the video, but this is one of the biggest things I realised when I made the leap into the aircrew world. I used to think about the issues if you lost an engine, or lost power, or the hydraulics fail, but seeing it's now from the other side, most of these issues are fairly benign. I remember when I would simulate an engine failure, and then I would act like the other engine was going to fail too. But each engine is a completely separate system. Working independently of each other, the only connecting part is the fuel. So for you to lose an engine with no external factors and then lose the other engine too, it would be like having two separate engine failures at the same time, which is beyond unlikely. Having a fear of flying isn't something you can just get over. And as I mentioned before, the perceived increase in risk doesn't help either. I hope this video provided some sort of relief or at least armed you with the way to ease the stress. I would recommend checking out the turbulence, emergency and aircraft noise videos as they provide more in-depth information on the topics, and in this instance, knowledge is power. Please feel free to ask any questions below, or if you have any topics you would like to see in a video, please let me know. I hope you're having a great day, 
Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.